In the process, rekindled memories of the last two postseasons when the Bombers worked their way through Oakland and Seattle en route to the World Series. After taking two of three against the A's, New York looked to do likewise against the M's. Hit. Top two, tied at one. Space. One on, nobody out. Jamie Moyer against Rondell White. Robin Ventura is going into second hard. Ventura is down. Ventura said the last thing he remembered was sliding into second, thinking he was going to be safe. He would leave the game with a sore jaw and a bruised neck and no memory. Top six, bases loaded. Moyer against Jason Jombie. Eight for 25 on the road trip. Thought he got all of this one with the bases loaded. He got enough of it to bring in a couple. Shane Spencer and Bernie Williams come plateward, and the Yankees go up 3-1. Top nine tied at three. Runner at third, two outs. Former Yankee Jeff Nelson against Nick Johnson in a two-for-24 slump. Yankees go up one. Jorge Posada will score. Bottom nine, 4-3. Mariano Rivera facing Carlos Guillen. And the whiff. After he hit a batter, and a walk, two on one out, Rivera against the pinch hitter Ichiro. Next batter, Mark McLemore. And the Yankees go on to win this one by the final of four to three. Yankees held the Mariners to a total of 12 hits and five runs in the series. Seattle came in second in the American League in hitting. Rivera's a splitter, and it's filthy. Next batter, Royce Clayton, he missed as well. Eight innings, no runs, three hits allowed by Hudson. Bottom third, no outs, four nothing. Miguel Tejada, base hit off Todd Ritchie. Megla Ordonez turns that into extra bases. Eric Chavez comes around to score in the two base air, five nothing Oakland. Three airs in the game by the Sox, which led to four unearned runs. And this one you're gonna see is, well, pretty much all earned by Eric. Chavez off Bob Howery, a three-run homer, his eighth of the season. He can just jog home from there. The A's, a 10-0 win. Hudson said he realized in the first inning he could throw his two-seam fastball anywhere he wanted. And the A's sweep this series by a combined score of 32-5. to They have beaten the White Sox 10 straight times. To Arlington, the Rangers and Indians, Calvin Murray at the plate. Bottom three tied at one. It is deep, but it's playable. Brady Anderson and Milton Bradley collide. Murray will end up with a triple off Bartolo Colon and the score on a ground out put Texas up two to one. You look at it again, Bradley takes Anderson's feet right out from underneath him. Hideki Arabu, archivist, savior. Matt Lawton to Rafael Palmero. Hideki Arabu finishes this one up. Fifth save and six chances. ERA 0.96. Ismail Valdez working six innings for his first win in four home starts this year. Texas has won back to back series for the first time. Bottom nine, Toronto up 4 3. Tim Salmon against Kel Escobar. We got a tie ball game and we go into extra innings. Bottom 14, Toronto up 5 4 after intentionally walking the bases loaded. Pedro Bourbon against David Eckstein. Eckstein hit a grand slam on Saturday. He did it again on Sunday. Ninth player in history to hit the first two grand slams of his career in consecutive games. Mets down 5-4. Man on second, Ray King to Mo Vaughn. Robbie Alibar, that man on second, would score. Vaughn would end up at second. We're tied at five on an ugly, rainy day in New York. Later in the sixth, two-minute board, Jay Payton. Vaughn will score. Jose Hernandez has some problems with the throw. Threw it in the Mets dugout. Fonzie will score. Mets led it 7-5. Bottom eight. Mo Vaughn at the plate. Jeremy Burnett's timing his swing against Takahito Nomura. It would pay off because, yeah, it's too delicious. I can't pass it up. Sayonara. Mets lead at 9-5. Mets lead 9-6. Two outs, bases loaded. In the ninth, Armando Benitez. It's not a job. It's an adventure. And he gets Matt Stairs with a whiff. Mo Vaughn is pumped up. Careful, though. Mets minus Mike Piazza on Mike Piazza bobblehead day of one four in a row. Bobblehead. Brewers finished winless in their six-game road trip. Jay Payton had three of the Mets' season-high 15 hits. Brewers are expected to name their full-time manager in the next couple of days. Interim manager Jerry Royster is considered the front runner. Fred Bird and UP, ace Matt Morris, a chance to finish off a St. Louis sweep, but that ain't gonna help. Vladimir Guerrero, get it. 15th career multi-homer game. He hit number six there, seven later. 
Top seven, Tomo Oka gets Edgar Renteria to fly out Jimmy Edmonds Tay in a third, and Guerrero gonna hose him off. You're done. Score stayed 5-1 at that point. The cards would get one, but too late. Expos win it by a count of five twos. The cards enjoy a whole day at 500, now back below it. Headed home after a four and nine road trip. The Expos finished their 13-game homestand. Nine and four, Vlad's 28 RBIs, a new April record for the franchise, and that mark figures to last probably forever. To Atlanta, the Braves and Astros. Henry Blanco at the plate. The uh, high fly that Brad Osmus will grab, but gets to know his teammate, Jeff Bagwell. Both players calling for it. Bagwell, you usually defer to the infielder. He was bloodied, but he stayed. Vinny Castilla, base knock, Orlando Merced. In what was a scoreless bottom three, Chipper Jones is nailed at the plate. Chipper was hurt his thumb and leave later in the game. Bottom eight, Astros pitcher T.J. Matthews, a different uniform than the rest of his team. It says Astros and he else says Houston. We have a problem. Bottom nine, Astros up 7-1, Matthews, Wes Helms, Morgan Ensberg gets Helms and Astros win it. Carlos Hernandez, the Astros 22-year-old left-hander, limited the Braves to four hits in seven shutout innings. Darrell Ward, two for four, raising his average to 367. Minnesota, Brad Radke, 8-0 against Detroit since June of 98. Craig Paquette ropes when there's Torrey on her. If it's in the air, Torrey's going to go out there and get it. We'll take another look at this one, and he is speedy. That speed never takes a day off. Still one zip Detroit. Bottom 5-2-1 Tigers. Randall Simon. Rip job. Career high, seventh homer, just 64 at bat. Last year, he set the career high with six and 256 at bats. Drama in the bottom of night, 4-4, four, four, two on two out. Bobby Higginson. The slide, he is out. Now he dropped it. Safe and home play to the Tigers sweep. A.J. Przinski drops the ball. Wendell McGee scores 5-4. The Tigers get their first sweep in 34 series. The last time they whipped somebody was the Royals in the first week of July. Last season, the Twins falter on a roadie they had hoped to dominate. 1-5 in, in Tampa. Scott Erickson, Luis Alisea. Sometimes you need to get some support. Watch Mike Bordick ranging to his left. Smother. Up. Fire. Carl Erickson's got that hard sinker working that he was throwing for years and was very successful with. Marty Cordova, 5-4. We got a... Whoa, airmail. Look out. Jake Gibbons comes in from second. 6-0 Orioles. Top seven, Blake Stein into face Bordick. Swing and a drive. Donnie Sadler, Nefe Perez. And you talk about an infielder playing left field. Again, yet time and time again, we see that people are trying to put infielders in the outfield. It's not that easy of a transition. No one's got to worry about catching this blast. Batista doubling left center field. That plays Conine for Batista in this series. Ten RBIs, 9 nothing O's, and Erickson looking filthy here. Luis Salisea grounds out. I'm going to step on the limb, out on the limb and say I'll be surprised if Erickson is around with the Orioles by the end of the season, even all-star break. I think they'll deal it. He's a guy that will bring a lot of pieces, and the Orioles are in need of him. Slugger, half speed, the other no speed at all. And here, Gabe White over Barry Bonds' head. Bonds, as he does most things, just takes that stride with finish today, one for three with two walks. However, Felix Rodriguez, bang on Sean Casey. Rodriguez says, sometimes you have to protect your hitters. Casey says, I've got a little kid at home and a wife. Sometimes you have to take care of things yourself. Says, it's the maddest he has ever been. They all came out, stared at each other. No punches were thrown. Dusty Baker said, nobody certainly is trying to hit Sean Casey. He's one of the most likable guys in the league. Well, Adam Dunn hit that. It's a baseball. His third of the year. He's country strong. Reds within one at 4-3. Top nine, 4 3 Jeff Kent. Three for five afternoon. Bumping his average to 259. David Bell would score. It's 5-3. Bottom nine. Rob Nen on to shut the door. And well, we got a door damage there. Dunn, second of the game. First multi home run game of his career. Fourth of the year. And it's 5-4. Next batter, the former driller doing the job. Aaron Boone missing on that one, and the game is over. Let's see. Giants 5-4. Cincinnati's seven-game win streak ends in anger. Giants' longest road trip in three years ends in anger, and at five, it's seven bonds. One more homer on the road. He just won 24 at bats since he hit 
his last one. As long as we're on the subject of San Francisco, Giants headed back home for a Monday night baseball date with the Phillies. Ball game you can see on ESPN beginning at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 local time. If you've got tickets, Robert Person faces Jason Schmidt. Person will also have to face Barry Bonds. Kurt Schilling facing the Marlins in Florida Sunday, dog day afternoon. Bring in your dog. 312 dogs in attendance. There it is. Top six, Diamondbacks trailing 3-2. Steve Finley has just left the building. His seventh game tied at three of Josh Beckett. Next batter, Damian Miller. That'd be back-to-back -back jacks. Miller sixth. Beckett, who had allowed a grand total of four homers in his eight previous career starts, has just given up back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back jacks. Martin Grace doing the honors. His fourth, five, three D-backs. More than enough for Kurt Schilling. That's Kurt with a C, but it should be a K. Seven innings, 13 Ks. Diamondbacks win this one, 5-4. Schilling and Randy Johnson now combined 11-1 this season. Schilling is tied with a big unit for the Major League League in Ks with 61. They join Roger Clemens as the only active pitchers to have recorded at least 60 strikeouts in the month of April. The announced attendance, 13,976, plus the 312 dogs on the dog day afternoon. Al Pacino was not among the attendees. Padres Pirates, first to two, bottom six, Jack Wilson facing Jason Boyd on the hit and run. Wilson falls down, hits it through the hole. Everybody is safe. Let's take another look at Wilson. The coordination, the motor skills, the reflexes of a pro athlete on display. Bottom seven, tied to two, Brian Giles, two for four, and that one is going to get to the wall. Giles is going to leg out a triple, all 270 feet of it. Adrian Brown's going to score in front of him, and the Pirates are going to win it by a count of three to two. Runner safe. Ryan Klesko, a home run. Not only is 1,000th hit, it pushed his hitting streak to an NL season high 15 games. Bucks improved to 8 and 1 now in one run games. In the nightcap, Brian Tolberg, in danger of being demoted to the minors, held Pittsburgh to two runs in six plus innings. Ryan Klesko drove in five runs as the Padres and Pirates split a doubleheader for the 11th consecutive time dating back to 1981. Kazuhisu Ishii. The first Dodger rookie since Fernando in 81 to win his first five decisions. Beats Starting pitchers versus the Cubs in this series. Pretty impressive. And a great strikeout to walk ratio. Bottom four, Ashby. Is that any way to treat the subject of the Sunday conversation? Ashby gets Todd Hunley. Ashby, Mark Bellhorn, Delino to Shields. Bottom eight, Dodgers up four zip, and Ashby gets Hunley to chase one again. Dodgers win this one. Four to one, Ashby and Paul Quantrill combining for the three hitter. Dodgers have won 10 of 13. The Milwaukee Brewers have lost six in a row. They own the Major's worst record at 7-18. and 18. I'm laughing because John you know, grew up in that area and I've just got <laughs> out of hand. But four of those seven wins did come under interim manager Jerry Royster. So the Milwaukee Brewers are expected to announce Tuesday or Wednesday that Royster can take off that interim label. He'll stay on as Brewers skipper. Milwaukee can celebrate at home Tuesday <laughs> against Greg Maddox and the Braves. Congratulations. <laughs> Elsewhere, Double Rays playing for the first time since being no hit by Derek Lowe. Now in Minnesota, Brent Abernathy Oh, there's a hit. First hit by the D-Rays since that no-hitter by Lowe. Bottom four twins up two to one, though. Joe Kennedy. Joe Kennedy is going to walk Dustin Moore. On the very next play, Kennedy will seek revenge by simply picking off Moore. Moore's teammates are concerned about Moore's mental state, so they console him on the bench. Same inning, Kennedy will walk A.J. Pierzynski. And wouldn't you know it? No. Yeah. No. Kennedy picks off Brzezinski to get out of the inning. His teammates did not console him on the bench, though. Bottom seven tied a two-runner at third, Denny Hawking. That's a high fly ball. Would it be high enough and far enough to score Dustin Moore on the sack fly? You better believe it. Twins win three to two. Eric Milton goes seven and a third. Six hits allowed, two runs for the victory. The Twins a major league best nine and one. Of Cruz at bat facing Jay Supan. Donnie Sadler. He's been doing his yoga. He also went two for four. Take another look. Sadler. Hustling. Awesome catch. And to hang on to it. Very impressive. Rendell McGee, meanwhile, same inning facing Supan. This 1-0 pitch. Catcher Brent Main appeals the swing. And the umpire, Aya Sonia, says he didn't go around. And then he throws out Tony Music because he was arguing the call. Well, that was at least the Music's problems. <laughs> Oh, that lonely walk back to the clubhouse. 
Oh, yeah. Around us on second and third one out, Jeff Weaver facing Michael Tucker back to the action, and there was action. That's a wild pitch. Carlos Fabla scores from third. The Royals break up a scoreless tie and go on to the victory. Jeff Supon ended up pitching a two-hitter. Tough loss for Jeff Weaver. Supon continuing a trend in what has been excellent pitching performances in baseball. His third career shutout, 10th complete game, and his first ever two-hitter. And so much for the thrill of victory. After the game, Tony Muser was fired as manager of the Kansas City Royals. It's not May yet, and we've already had four skippers let go. Five, if you count Joe Kerrigan in spring training. Muser took over the Royals in the middle of 1997. Well, since then, he's become the losingest manager in franchise history. This season, they've won just eight of 23 games. Said Muser, I'm not ashamed. I did the best I could possibly do. You know, the baseball's only juiced if you hit it. Homer droughts colliding in San Francisco Monday night. Barry Bonds, 12 days, two dozen at-bats without a home run. But that is tame compared to the Phillies, who are a roaming band of weak sticks. The Phillies not only swept in Colorado over the weekend, but just the third visiting team to go homerless in a three-game series at Coors Field since the park opened in 1995. Jason Jason Schmidt in San Francisco, no help. He's 4-0 and four career starts at Pac-12. And Mike Lieberthal found that out early. Top third were scoreless, though, Jimmy Rollins. Little spank off Schmidt. Barry Bonds is out there. Can of corn and maybe just a little too casual. That's a whoops. Second air of the year for Bonds. Two batters later, Bobby Abreu. That's going to go the other way. Double to right. Rollins will score. It's an unearned run, and the Phillies lead it by a count of one zip. They've stretched the lead to 4 0 in the top of the fourth. Abreu again. He was two for four. Doug Glanville will score. It's fives at Phillies. Schmidt exits after just three and two-thirds inning, leaves it for Robert Person. Now, the Giants haven't rallied for more than one run down to win a game all season. Let's get it started. Bonds singles to right, starting a rally. He was two for three, two walks in the night. Bonds and Paul, oh, Jeff Kent. That's protecting your man in the order. His fourth home run of the year, two-run shot, makes it 5-3. Person left the game a bit unhappy. Still bottom six, two on. Benito Santiago against Jose Silva. Rollins. He tried to get the force. Instead, everybody moving up. Part of a four-run inning in this game to tie it up at five. J.T. Snow, there you see, scoring. Bottom seven bases loaded for Santiago, and David Coggin walks, and Bond scores. 6-5 Giants. Next guy up, Pedro Feliz, and Coggin on four pitches walks Feliz. Jeff Kent will get to trot home. Larry Boa is not happy. His pitchers blew the five-run lead, and the Giants win it by a count of 8-5. Let's compare the bullpen, shall we? Phillies pen two and two thirds innings, three hits, four runs, seven walks. The Giants bullpen absolutely perfect in relief. 16 up and 16 down. Bonds is nine game streak with an RBI, without an RBI, excuse me, his longest since 1993. Orioles looking for the eighth win in ten games. Frank Castile pitching for the Red Sox. Top of the second one nothing Orioles. Runners on first and third. Geronimo Heal, the chopper to Shea Hillenbrand. Off his glove, Tony Batista would score. And that was ruled a base hit for Heald, 2-0 Orioles. Next batter, runners on first and third, Mike Moriarty, one hopper. Hillenbrand bobbles it. He'll get the fielder's choice at second. Marty Cordova scores. It's 3-0 Baltimore. Top five, Castillo pitching to Heal. Heal, he hit two homers off Castillo in his last start. He added another Monday. Right over that green monster. Heal, four for eight, three homers off of Castillo lifetime, 4-0. Bottom seven, Tony Clark on second, Ray Sanchez. Sanchez, the grounder. Through the hole, Clark, where is he? He's rounding third and he's heading home. Melvin Mora, what's he doing? He comes up throwing. Play at the plate, he's safe. How'd this happen? Take another look. The throw beats Clark. And he tries to block the plate with his right leg, but Clark gets his toe in before the bag. Close play, good call. Two outs, first and second for Hill and Brown. The bouncer, Batista. Does his job, fields it, steps on third for the fourth inning over. Thread over with the Sox down two. Wild pitch. Clock advances to third, but why did Jason Veritek hold it first? Would that cost the Red Sox? Let's see. Nixon popping up to short to Mike Bordick, who's waiting for it. That's one out, no run score. Your next batter, Jose Offerman, pitch hitting for Ray Sanchez, because Veritek was still at first, enabled this to happen, a 4-6-3 game-ending double play, Orioles win. That's four straight wins for Baltimore, eight wins in their last 10 games. Besides Eel, Melvin Mora went deep for the Orioles, said Frank Castillo about Eel's homer success against him. It just seems like he knows it's coming. Next time, I've got to find a way to figure it out. 
ESPN's Peter Gammons reporting that Braves right fielder B.J. Surhoff has a torn right ACL. He's going to need surgery and five to six months of rehab. He is expected to miss the rest of the year. Meanwhile, Dodger ace Kevin Brown is slated to come off the disabled list on Tuesday and actually start against the very tough and surprising Cincinnati Reds.